Hey everybody, welcome to today's video. We're gonna be talking about uh, how do couples retire when there's a large age gap, like 10 years between the two of you. Um, it's something I don't think anybody's really talking about. A lot of people talking, if you do some searches, you'll find a lot of people talking about what happens if I retire at age 60 to my Canada pension plan, can I retire early, will I have enough money to retire, all these different subjects. But very few people are talking about what, how do you retire when you're at a different age groups between couples? How does that work? And I'm going to be doing that from my office outside. How's that? Very few uh, people talking about the subject. And by the way, I want to ask you a question. What do you think of this format of me just going for a, a walk? Um, there's a great forested area here up near my house that I'll just walk through. Beautiful trail, quiet right now during the day. And uh, let me know what you think of this format. If you love it, great, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know too, because I'm, I'm interested to hear what your thoughts are on this um, kind of format. And it's new for me too. I'm, not, uh, I'm very used to being in an office environment and uh, doing this casual thing is, uh, oh, it's new for me. Okay, this is a subject I think that is, um, is not talked about a lot. Um, if this is uh, just to be clear, this is not a video about um, can I marry somebody older than me? <laughs> you know, one of these videos where you know I, I married this person and they're 21 years older than me, or they're 15 years older than me, and why it worked or why it didn't work. This is not this video, <laughs> and I guarantee you, I won't, I will never be making a video on this channel about that subject. It's just not the right video. Um, but like a lot of um, couples who um, are married or are not married but just together and uh, their age are like far apart and that's a very normal thing that I see and when you're when you're together um, you know whether it's raising a family and so on that's not really the issue the issue is what happens when you go to retire and the other person isn't ready to be retired They'd like to be retired, but they can't. They can't either from a, from a financial point of view, can't stop working. Um, it's important for them to continue working. Maybe it's, the, it's their own uh, company and they have their own small business and whoever's gonna be taking over the business, if it's kids, 10, they need 10 more years to be ready um, or you haven't done any succession planning and that's not a, um, your older spouse is ready to retire, but you're not. So one has to remain behind. So th those are big discussion points. And I don't see anybody really talking about it, so I'm gonna talk about it today. So here's the, the first thing is, it's we're gonna talk about the emotional intelligence around you retiring sooner than your spouse, your partner. Look, the first thing that has to happen is you gotta reconcile the between the two of you, the fact that, you know, the older spouse is, let's say it's a 10-year gap. The older spouse has worked and put in their time. They're 10 years ahead of you in retirement, right? And they've earned it. They've earned the right to enjoy the time that you've been working all these years and finally that day has arrived and it's time for you to enjoy your retirement. What's sad is that you're not able to do it together. And so if you're not able to do it together, I'm gonna to talk about how to do that in a minute, but if you're not able to do that together, then you have to reconcile, you have to have this conversation so that you understand, because there's this very sore point when, you know, one person's getting up at six o'clock in the morning, going to a job that they, they kind of don't want to be at maybe anymore, they're tired, they want to be retired as well, while the other person, you know, rolls over and <laughs> goes back to sleep and gets up at their own leisure and uh, goes golfing, goes on the boat, doing whatever. It's their time, they've earned it. While the other person goes and does this job that they, maybe they do enjoy it, but they would much rather be at home with you or just with you in general. And so that becomes a real sore point. Think about all the years that you've been together and you come home and you talk about, you know, you're having dinner together and you start complaining bitching and complaining about your job, your boss, everything like that. But it's the way that you communicate with one another. And you've been doing that for 20 years. 
And it's just, it's kind of like self-medicating. It's, it's your own therapy session that you have with your spouse. And it's one of the, the things that helps you get through all these years of, 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 of work, especially a job maybe that you don't enjoy so much. And then that all comes to an end, right? When that person is no longer having the same issues that you're having, that they're enjoying their day, and you come home and you're frustrated and you're tired and you unload on them and they kind of have the patience for it because they don't have the stress they can hear what you have to say but then when you when you turn the conversation around and you say and how was your day there's a there's a problem and the problem is that person the older person who's retired feels i don't want to say shameful but it's almost like they don't want to like like do this you know they don't want to say to you, I had an awesome day today. Today I went golfing or I was on the boat all day. Whatever that issue might be. And the other person is kind of left like thinking, well, my problem's bigger than your problem. Like, what do you got to complain about? So there's a dynamic there that's very uneasy between couples when there's a large age gap and one is working and the other one is not. So you have to have a conversation around reconciling that. Now, the best way to fix that problem is retirement synchronization. Big word. All it really means is you get with your financial advisor and you say, look, how do we retire closer together? What do we need to do so that my spouse or my partner doesn't have to wait seven years before she or he can join me in retirement because after all you worked your entire life so that you could i mean you talked about it right through all your working years you know when we retire we're going to go and do this we're going to see that we're going to travel we're going to enjoy and the other person is kind of like delayed retirement you got to wait 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 so the thing you got to do is get with your financial advisor and start talking about retirement synchronization what do you need to do in order to get the other person to like advance their retirement date now you do that by having a financial plan my goodness i go through every video and i talk about a financial plan because it's the single biggest thing you got to do besides working and having money to put towards your your uh, retirement um, but you got to have a plan you got to be able to say what do i need to put away every month at what rate of return so savings rate times the rate of return times time to be able to have enough money so that i'll be able to retire at the same time or develop another income source so if it's not traditional investments is it rental income i don't care what you're doing but you got to be able to say how do we get to a point where you can financially retire at the same time as your spouse is that does that make sense let me know what you think in your comments below i want to i want to hear what you think about that because it's it's a really important thing the sooner you start doing that kind of planning because time's not on your side. Time is not a friend in this equation. If you're too close to retirement date, it's just not enough time to build up the assets to be able to do that. So you gotta think well ahead. If you get, if you're with somebody who has a defined benefit plan, like let's say you're a teacher, you work for the government, military, um, a fireman, policeman, that kind of thing, or somebody's just working at a company's got a defined benefit plan, which is if you're working there, it's a great thing to have. Um, count your blessings because it's very helpful in retirement but if you're if you're with someone in a committed relationship that has that start talking about it now and especially if that person who has the pension plan is 10 years older than you start talking about it now how do I get to a point so that I can retire at the same date or really close to your date because um, it's gonna be misery if you can't it really will be not a happy uh, place for you so that's first thing or that's one of the things the next so the next thing obviously is getting serious about your retirement serious about investing so when you talk to your advisor you want to talk about how much money can we put aside what kind of risk tolerance am I in is my portfolio matching my risk tolerance are you under investing so many people under invest meaning they don't take on the risk that they're comfortable taking their portfolio doesn't match it. They're actually well below what they're able to take on in terms of risk. And a lot of people invest the same amount of money every single year. 
And they do that just out of habit. And I want you to, instead of thinking about that you put, you know, whatever X dollars away this year, I want you to think about from the other way around. And I've said this before in other videos, which I'll link here. Um, will I have enough money to retire is one of them. And that is come at it from the reverse. Come at it from an, an income point of view. How much money do you need at a specific time in the future that's going to last your entire um, lifetime? Come up with that number and then reverse engineer. And this is what your financial advisor does for you, by the way. And that number is going to be the number that you have to put away every single week, month, whatever it is, at whatever rate of return to get you to that point. That's the way you solve that problem. It's not complicated. It's actually a pretty simple exercise to go through. What's more complicated, I think, for a lot of couples is try trying to figure out what to do in retirement. A lot of people um, hate their jobs but don't know what they're going to do in retirement. So that's a really bad combination to have. You really want to start to get excited about your retirement. So again, um, long t first thing is, what are you going to do with your time? You're 55 years of age. You retire. That's 30 years of retirement because age 85, we'll say age, age 86, is your average retirement date and or average uh, death age in Canada. And a little bit of scenery here for you. And um, so that's a long time to be retired. So what do you plan to do with your day? How are you going to fill those hours in your day with something meaningful? If you're just going to be parking yourself on the sofa and watching TV, that is a recipe for disaster. Um, you're going to gain weight. You're going to become lethargic. You're going to be out of shape. You're not going to be using your brain. I mean, you're just going to get old real fast. And unless you, I mean, unless that's the only thing you can do because of maybe some kind of limitations, then it is what it is, right? But if you have the capacity that you can do more, but you just don't know what to do, well, that's a problem. So you got to start thinking about that. The second is synchronization. Make sure that you can find a way to be able to advance your younger spouse's retirement date closer to your retirement date so you can you know enjoy your lifestyle together the thing that you both dreamed about for a long time but you just every day months and years go by you, you didn't have that conversation so you gotta you gotta get on top of that right away look at your portfolio are you invested properly so that you can make sure that you have enough money so not being under invested taking on uh, the risk that you you ought to be doing putting uh, the right amount of money into the right kinds of investments to produce the income that you need so you can retire early enough and protecting your incomes. Now that is a super important thing that you got to make sure too. If you are the, um, the older spouse with the pension plan and you got to have enough life insurance, people say, why do I need life insurance? I have a pension plan. Well, what if you die before you retire? Well, that's the, one of the main purposes for life insurance, dying too early. So that's a, everybody kind of understands that dying too early. That's the reason for life insurance. But what if you pass away during retirement and your pension plan allows for you to pass on 60 percent to your spouse? So can your spouse live on a 40 percent reduction of monthly income? And if not, then you should have um, insurance that's equal to the reduction that your your spouse is going to experience, right? Times 30 years. It's not a big number. Um, it seems like a big number, but it's not when it, from an insurance point of view. How you fill that gap, what kind of insurance, whether it's term insurance, universal life, or whole life, that's another conversation. Um, ring me up. You send me a message. I'll help you figure that out because I'm life licensed. I, I help clients with their estate planning and their life insurance needs as well as investing. But you got to make sure that if you are the older spouse, um, it's likely that you might it's likely that you might die sooner than your spouse, your younger spouse. And you got to make sure that you have enough insurance that's going to cover that gap. It's super important. Um, and really, that's it. It's really about your emotional intelligence around it. The video that I did earlier today talked about the math. What happens to your Canada pension plan if you retire at age 55? What kind of reduction of income will you, will you have during that period of time because of the dropout uh, provisions with Canada pension? But really, when a couple are 10 years apart, 
This is really talking about the emotional intelligence about retirement and just being prepared for it. So I hope that information has been helpful for you today. Let me know what you think about this format of walking around and talking with you. I don't mind to do it. It was really relaxing, pleasant way to get out of uh, the office instead of shooting the video in another, in the uh, office again. Let me know what you think. If you liked it, great. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that like button, help me with the algorithm so this video goes out to everybody else. I want to thank all the subscribers that have uh, been uh, part of my channel so far. Um, I've had amazing growth over the last month and a half, two months. It's been really exciting to see me go from 100 to I think 400 now. So thank you so much for all your help and your continued support of the channel. I look forward to giving you more videos on all kinds of different subjects related to uh, financial planning and kind of a little bit of lifestyle. And uh, if you have any ideas and you'd like me to um, make a video around a certain subject, just drop a comment below and I'll be happy to do that. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video and thanks for watching and taking time to, uh, to see this video today. Thanks, take care.